In this video, we are going to solve some exponential equations using our algebra skills. Um, so, the first thing we should do is get the uh, base and power by itself. So, uh, we can add 8 to both sides to move us in the right direction. That will give us 1 third to the x plus 6 power is equal to um, 243. Now, um, I need to get like bases somehow. I see the three here, but it's like one third. So here's what you have to understand. Remember that n to the negative one power, remember how that's one over n? Well, it goes the other way around. If I see one over n, I know that's going to be n to the negative one power. Um, so if I see 1 over 3, I know that's going to be 3 to the negative 1 power. So here I've just replaced 1 third with 3 to the negative 1 power. Now I've still got this x plus 6, which I better put in parentheses to remind me to distribute later. Now meanwhile, I really need this to be uh, 3 to some kind of a power. 3 to a power. But um, what power? Well. I'm going to use my exponent table, which you are allowed to use. Um, so let's see. I need it to be 3 to a power. So I'm going to start with 3. And then as I go along, these are the various powers. So I'm scanning across until I get to the 243. And I see that is 3 to the fifth power is 243. So great. I can write 243 as 3 to the fifth power. OK. Now, if the bases are equal, that means the exponents must be equal. So that means this exponent must equal 5. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the distributive property with this, um, which equals this. But this is negative x minus 6 once I do the distributive property. So now I'm just solving this algebra 1 problem. Um, I can solve this by adding 6 to both sides. That will give me negative x is equal to 11. Um, but we need x, not negative x. So I will divide both sides by negative 1. And x is equal to negative 11. So that is going to be the answer to problem number 5. All right, let's slide over and look at problem number 6. OK, same deal. We need like bases. Right away, what do you think I'm going to do with this 1 fourth? I'm going to rewrite this as 4 to the negative 1 power. Now, I know that 64 is 4 to the third power because I've memorized that. If you need the table 4 to the third power, 64, then fine. And again, I have the x minus 2. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Now, if the bases are equal, the exponents must be equal. So I am going to set the exponents equal to each other. But in the meantime, I will distribute. So that will be 3x minus 6 is equal to negative 2x minus 1. I see x's on both sides, so I can put the x's together uh, by adding 2x to both sides. So that will give me 5x minus 6 is equal to negative 1. Um, trying to get x by itself, I will add 6 to both sides. That will give me 5x is equal to 5. To get x by itself now, I will simply divide both sides by 5. So I will get x equals 1. And that will be the final answer. OK, number seven. It's all about getting like bases. Um, I know that 25 can be written as 5 squared. So I'm hoping that 125 can be written as 5 to a power. I actually remember that 125 is 5 to the third power. If you did not know that, Look at your chart. 5 to the third power is 125. So I've replaced both of these numbers with ba uh, base 5 and the exponent. 
Now, if the bases are equal, the exponents must be equal. Whoops, that includes the two. So these should equal each other. So I'm going to make a new equation setting the exponents equal to each other. But on the left, I have 12x. And on the right, I have 6x minus 4. Getting these x's together, I will subtract 6x from both sides. That will leave me with 6x is equal to negative 4. Now, dividing both sides by 6 to get x by itself, I will need to reduce, though. So that's going to give me x is equal to negative 2 thirds. And that should be the final answer uh, for number 7 here. Okay, let's move on to number 8. Okay, um, I do not multiply 1 half times 4. If this has an exponent, so um, you can't multiply. Um, instead, I am going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Because if I do that, that 2 will cancel out this denominator of 2. And I don't even need the 1. So this is going to become 4 to the 2x minus 1 power is equal to uh, 256. Um, I don't really even need these parentheses at this point. So I really need these to be the same base. So I'm hoping I can write 256 using base 4. All right, 4 to the something power. Um, hopefully. Well, let's look at the table. See, there's my 4. There's my 256. Fourth power. So I can write this as 4 to the fourth power. Now the bases are the same. If the bases are equal, then the exponents must be equal. So 2x minus 1 must equal 4. I can get x by itself by adding 1 to both sides. So that's 2x is equal to 5. And then now I'm dividing by 2. So x is equal to 5 over 2. And that is my final answer for number 8. All right, number 9. This one has cube roots in it. So that's interesting. Um, it will be helpful if I put these on opposite sides of the equation. So I really need to do that before I start. So I'm just going to move this over. I mean, technically, I'm adding the cube root of 3x plus 6 to both sides of the equation. Cube root of 3x plus 6. But yeah, come on. I'm moving it over to the other side, and it'll be positive over there. So I'm going to wind up with the cube root of x minus 4 equals the cube root of 3x plus 6. Now, um, if I cube both sides of this equation, the cube root will go away. These uh, will undo each other. All right, so I will end up with x minus 4 is equal to 3x plus 6. Suddenly, this doesn't look so bad. I'm going to get the x's together by subtracting 3x from both sides. So that'll be negative 2x minus 4 is equal to 6. Now I will add 4 to both sides. So that's going to give me negative 2x is equal to 10. To get x by itself, we will divide both sides by negative 2. So I will get x is equal to negative 5. And that is the final answer for number 9. OK, let's move on to number 10. I think this is the last problem I'm going to do on this video. Yep. All right, last problem. Um, first, I need to get the, per, the base and the power. I need to get this part of the equation 
by itself. So to do that, I'm going to do the same things I would do if this was a Q. If I had like 2Q minus 28 equals 100, I would add 28 to both sides, and then I would divide by 2. So those are the first two steps I'm going to do now. So I will add 28 to both sides. So that's going to give me 2 times 3x minus 11 to the 2 thirds power is equal to 128. Now, please understand, I cannot multiply and distribute the 2 and get 6x minus 22 because of the exponent. If there was no exponent, I could do that. But you can't just multiply something that has an exponent on it. Exponents uh, come first. Um, so instead, like I said, I will divide both sides by 2 now. Um, so these 2's cancel out. And uh, 128 divided by 2 is 64. OK. Now, to get rid of a fractional exponent like this, what you want to do is do the reciprocal power to both sides of the equation. So on this side, I'm going to do the 3 over 2 power. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to raise this to the 3 over 2 power. Now, over here, these are going to wind up canceling each other out and making 1, which I don't need to write down. Straight mark. Um, so I'm just going to have 3x minus 11 is equal to. Now, here I've got power over root. Power over root. That's what fractional exponents mean. Um, so 2 is the root. So that means I'm going to have the square root of 64. 3 is the power, which means I'm going to wind up cubing that result. So let's see. So I have 3x minus 11. OK. The square root of 64 is 8. 8 to the third power, um, I think is 512, but I'm actually not sure. So let me look at the, ch at the chart. 8 to the third power is 512. So now I'm back uh, happily in Algebra 1. So I will add 11 to both sides. So that will give me 3x equals 523. Um, and then I'm going to divide both sides by by 3. Now I'm not sure 3 even divides evenly into this. I don't think it does. I'm adding up the digits. 5 plus 2 is 7. Um, 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 is not divisible by 3. That means 523 is not going to be divisible by 3. So that means that this is my final answer. 523 over 3. You can just leave it like that. So that's it. That is the answer to number 10. Pretty ugly answer, but what are you going to do? It's what you get sometimes. All right, and that's going to do it for this video. I will see you on the next video. In the next video, we will discuss things like um, creating an exponential function that is shifted left with a range of 5 to infinity.